this time I would draw your attention to the life and work of our church, which is found printed in our order of service and the announcements. Uh, first, of course, is there a warm welcome to all who are joining with us on this snowy Sunday morning, uh, which is something I never expected to say the week after Easter when Easter is late. Um, warm welcome to those who are joining us in the online service as well. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with those who are going to be heading out and fishing this season. Uh, the fishing fleet is getting ready to head out uh, on the uh, Cape George shore. Uh, the blessing of the boats actually is this afternoon, be starting at 12 noon at Cribbins Point and then at Ballantyne's Cove and then I think at Livingston's Cove, although sometimes they join us at Ballantyne's Cove. Uh, in terms of the other announcements, uh, the latest issue of Connections is available. Uh, it is available online in color and PDF for those who are interested. If you'd like a print copy, they can be available through your big they can be picked up through the church office. Uh, the other announcements are as printed in your order of service. I would draw them to your attention and action as appropriate. Let's take a few moments and prepare our hearts for worship. Please join with me in our call to worship. Though we experience trouble and sorrow and life does not always turn out as we want, we come, to wor it, we come together in worship to say, Though life is complicated and unpredictable, ever-changing and ever-challenging, we come together as God's people to proclaim, Though the pain in our lives and the chaos around us sometimes threaten to overwhelm us with grief and fear, we stand firm in our faith, for we believe. Let us pray together. Eternal God, you made this day. You fill each moment with signs of your love. Your grace fills each possibility, and your promise move around us and within us leading us to the hope of the resurrection. Thank you. Thank you for your forgiveness, your mercy, your love, and all that you do for us and our world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, number 175, This is the Day that God Has Made. Oh, 
week after Easter. Feels like it was just yesterday, but it's a week after Easter. And as we read our scripture lessons, as we consider what it means for us to be a week and more after Easter celebration, we come to understand that what the disciples have to do and what we have to do is actually open our eyes and our hearts to what God is doing through Jesus. To be able to see for ourselves God at work in the world. And that may seem daunting because sometimes we just don't know. But the truth is that faith allows us sometimes to see what we don't expect to see and be surprised at God's work amongst us. Now, as an illustration, I brought my little, uh, my little plaque here this morning, and it, it doesn't look like anything, well, partially because I got it turned upside down. Um, it doesn't really look like anything. It just looks like, well, there's some random bits here, and it doesn't seem to mean anything. But as soon as somebody points out that that's a J, I don't know if I can get it, then that's an E. Oh, then you start to see, oh, there's an S, and there's a U, and there's an S. And instead of looking at this, you start looking at the, 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 what's behind it, and you start to see that, hey, that spells out, what does it spell out? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And you know the interesting thing? Now that you've seen that, I can go all like this and put it back up, and you see it right away. And that's what faith does for us in the world. It allows us to see God right away. And even if it seems hidden, and even if others can't see, we begin to see God and what God is doing in the world through Jesus. And that way we're able to follow and grow in faith. Let's open our hearts to God as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And invite those who are heading off to children's worship to do so now. Our responsive reading this morning is uh, Psalm 100, found on page 824, and we'll sing refrain number two. Shout to God, all the earth. Come before God with laughter. To the shepherd who tends us like sheep. Come to God's gates with thanks. Praise and bless God's name. You are always gracious. from the Acts of the Apostles. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned the apostles, saying, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior so that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. 
and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey. And reading from the Revelation to John. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all of the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And the Gospel of Jesus according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to them, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God bless to us a further understanding of these words and to the name of God be eternal glory and honor and praise. Amen.
believe in aliens? I'll admit that wasn't the question I expected from a passerby a number of years back when I was leaving church, but I went with it and said that, no, I don't believe in aliens. That prompted a bit of a lecture about how the universe is large and no reasonable person thinks that there's only life on Earth. I agree, was my response. I think there certainly could be life on other planets. But you told me that you don't believe in aliens, my questioner protested. I don't, I replied, because whether I think that aliens may be real or not doesn't change my life. It doesn't matter one way or another to my day. And the things that I believe in make a difference, not just in what I think, but in how I live. I know that we often use the words think and believe interchangeably in casual conversation. But the fact is that within the church, belief means something more than just thinking that something might be true without proof. Belief is also when we trust, when we hope, when we have faith about things that are important, that matter to how we live and lead our lives. It doesn't matter if you believe that one of the women who came to the tomb on Easter morning was named Salome. It does matter if you believe that the women are witnesses to Jesus rising from death, which brings us to this morning's gospel lesson. Easter Sunday evening, the disciples are gathered behind locked doors out of fear of those who killed Jesus, and Jesus appears among them and says, peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side. Jesus blesses the disciples, and they're overjoyed to experience the truth of the resurrection for themselves. But of course, one of the disciples is missing. Thomas is not with the others, and when he hears their story of Jesus being alive, he protests, saying, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And next Sunday, the disciples and Thomas are gathered together, and Jesus appears among them and says, peace be with you. And then Jesus turns to Thomas and says, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. To which Thomas replies, my Lord and my God. And Jesus questions whether Thomas believes because he has seen, and Jesus blesses those who have heard and believed without seeing for themselves. Now, this gospel lesson is always the story we hear the week after Easter, and I think that's for a very specific reason. Because when we hear that the tomb is empty, when we're told that Jesus, who was dead, is now alive, we're confronted with an unusual, a surprising, and some would say a difficult story to accept, which leads us to consider what it means to believe. Because Thomas doesn't believe when the other disciples tell him they have seen Jesus. He isn't willing to accept, to consider, or to hope that they might be telling the truth. He wants proof. But before we get too down on Thomas and his doubts, I think it's important to note that when Jesus first appears to the disciples, the ones who had seen him suffer and die, after he speaks to him, the scripture is clear that he shows them his hands and his side. Why? Well, quite simply, they need to see that the person appearing to them, it really is Jesus, which they do, and they believe. But Thomas isn't willing to simply accept their witness or to even say, I need to see myself before I believe. He demands to touch the wounds, to put his hands in those marks before he will consider that Jesus is alive. Which actually brings us to what I think is the good news of our reading, which happens when Jesus appears to the disciples and Thomas. Good news which comes in two parts. The first is that Jesus meets Thomas in his doubts. He doesn't reject Thomas or condemn him for having them. But neither is Jesus willing to overlook Thomas's dismissal of what the other disciples experiences. Jesus comes to him, but questions him about his rejection of what the others said. 
Now, the second part of the good news is that Thomas doesn't need the proof that he thinks he does in order to believe. Jesus appears, speaks to him, and invites him to touch the wounds, and then the gospel moves directly to Thomas's profession of faith, which suggests that he realizes simply seeing, like the others, that Jesus is in front of him is enough. Now, there is no question that after the encounter in the upper room, the disciples believe that Jesus is alive. There's no question when Jesus meets Thomas that he believes as well. And here I need to make the distinction that I made at the start. The disciples think that Jesus is alive because they see him, but they also believe that he is alive. And I say that they believe because Jesus being alive changes their world. It isn't simply a nice, happy fact, but rather a life-changing experience. Because Jesus is alive, the disciples have hope. Because Jesus is alive, they have a new understanding of the world. Because Jesus is alive, they see the way forward which will lead them from being simply followers of Jesus to being those who tell and share the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection with others. Which is why Thomas answers, my Lord and my God, after Jesus appears to him. Thomas realizes that the other disciples are telling the truth about Jesus being alive, and he also believes. Thomas makes the connections between what's happened to Jesus and the message Jesus proclaimed in his life. He sees that Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, the one sent for him to follow, and he also believes that God is at work in Jesus and through Jesus in a way that is unique and cannot be denied. So he makes a profession of faith. He trusts, he hopes, he places his faith in Jesus. In other words, he believes. Now, none of us were in the upper room when Jesus appeared to the disciples. None of us have seen the risen Jesus appearing before us. We can't prove beyond a shadow of a doubt to another person that Jesus is alive. But we can believe. Because, as I said earlier, belief isn't about knowing for a fact or having proof that something is true. Belief, it, belief is about hoping, trusting, and having faith. And we are those who have heard the story of the first disciples who were witnesses to those things. We have heard the stories of those who came later and the witness of the church which carries the good news of Jesus into the world. And we may still have some doubts uncertainties. We may not understand exactly or completely what happened or what God is doing through the resurrection, but the truth is that we don't have to. All we need to do is hope in the story that on the third day Jesus rose from death. All we need to do is trust in the goodness of God, the love God has for us, trust that it is greater than anything else. All we need to do is believe and allow that belief to transform our hearts and our hands. Because when we do that, then we are blessed because the good news becomes part of who we are. And we in turn, by living as followers of Jesus and showing the grace and mercy of God in our lives, we in turn become the way in which God blesses our world. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together number 158 from Voices United, Christ is Alive.
Let us gather all that we have in our hearts. Let us pray. God of light and life, we see your promise and hope in the rising sun, in the golden fields of new daffodils, and the feel of a spring shower. Help us, we pray, to see your presence reflected throughout creation and throughout those with whom we share our days. God of compassion, you are there with those who are facing the effects of a changing climate and are affected by floods, by droughts, and by famine. Show us, we pray, how to be there with them too. God of truth and justice, you hear those people around the world who struggle to make their voices heard. Open our ears and the ears of those in power to hear the cries of those suffering and in pain. God of hope, we see you in people who refuse to give up, who will not lose faith and keep on fighting for your earth and for your people. Lift us so that we may never lose hope either. God of grace, we pray for those who are in hospital, those who are mourning the death of a loved one. We pray for those undergoing treatment and all who are struggling with their health. We remember the people in Ukraine, Yemen, Ethiopia, and other lands torn apart by war. We remember places like Nigeria, South Sudan, and other countries where people are struggling to find enough food for the day. We pray. We pray this day for our world, for our community, for our loved ones and friends, and for ourselves as we continue to pray in the silence. God of peace, show us your way that we might live and serve and be signs of your love and how we treat the people around us and how we care for the world you have given to us. Hear all of our prayers, we ask, for we offer them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn, hymn number 187 in Voices United, The Spring Has Come. take with us these words from the Gospel of John. For Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Go out into the world with love, with hope, and with faith. 
believe in the risen Christ. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and all of your days. Amen.